Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Renew Show. We started on time for the uh, first episode of the season, so I'm happy about that. Google didn't give us any problems. So um, we've just been in here having a good time, um, you know, just talking about everything before we started. So I just want to thank you guys all for um, coming out, and again, thank you for the support. Thank you for all the anticipation and the comments and everything we've been seeing in the community, and uh, just want to get started. So I'll let... Um, my uh, co-host and actually guest for today, uh, say hello to everyone. Hi guys, I am uh, here trying to uh, use my mouse here with the other with the with my iPad. So I'm going to be reading your comments and enjoying everybody. everybody and Oops. To the new show. What happened? Oh, you just have to turn the volume down on your, on your husband's laptop. Okay, 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 okay. I'm so, sorry, guys. Y'all knew I was going to mess up. Okay. I saw we. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be your host. And um, a Zen Maiden said she's going to be nice because she's always nice. Okay, Zen Maiden. <laughs> well, so I hope you're... everybody so far. <laughs> um, all right. I just wanted to talk a little bit about kind of the structure of the uh, show, especially for people who aren't familiar with it, who didn't see it in the first season. Um, the show is going to air every Tuesday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern time, 6 a.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Pacific time, and um, it's going to be an hour long. The show is is a live broadcast, but if you're unable to watch it live, um, it will actually convert into a normal YouTube video so if you can't watch it live or you come in late you can still catch all of it at any time you want you can share it and like it and do everything else that you would a normal YouTube video um, right now uh, someone asked I believe it was uh, Pete Rocks the Sleeve asked if we have plans for another host right now it's just going to be Rose and myself um, but we are. We have a couple of announcements to that we will be making in the next few weeks um, once we figure out the structure <clears throat> of everything. So, with all that said, um, last thing, there will be a podcast coming soon, and I'll give you guys information about that as well. Um, if you don't can't tell yet, you can on the right side of the window. There's a stream of comments, so you can participate. You can ask us questions. You can leave us comments, and you can talk to everybody else who is watching the show as well. So uh, just keep that in mind. We definitely want you to participate. And today is going to be a special show because I'm actually interviewing Rose. <clears throat> and, um, you know, you guys get a chance to bombard her with all of your tough, difficult questions, everything you ever wanted to know about her. Um, <laughs> yeah, we didn't talk about that part, right? <laughs> but you guys, right now, you can be leaving your questions for her, and I'll make sure to try to get them all in. If we can't get them all in, then you know she'll try to answer them in whatever way is best for her. And that's it. I think that's all the housekeeping. If not, I'll try to come back later if I need to. Um, so, Rose, are you ready to talk about you? I guess I'm ready. Uh, first of all, <laughs> Uh, nerd uh, or in Oregon said I'm gorgeous. Thank you, girlfriend. <laughs> Did she happen to talk about me at all, or no? She didn't. She didn't say a word. Mm. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Um, all right. So um, I just want you to talk about yourself. Talk about your your story. Just. Let us know about yourself. I mean, I told you you kind of have freedom with this, so just uh, take it away. I am uh, Gastric Rose, if everybody knows me. They all call me Mama Rose. I think that I started with uh, a back in, well, no, I started back in 2007 or 8. So I've been on YouTube for about five years, maybe. And um, my, my starting weight was 487 pounds. I look like that. And I think a lot of you know what I look like. Did we just lose her? All right, we just lost her for a second, so I'm going to try to get her back on here. Um, not sure exactly what happened. So this is going to be kind of a boring show until she pops back, so I hope she does quickly. I don't know I, what I, happened. I don't know either. So. <laughs> is everybody there? 
Anyway, it's probably because I showed the picture, but anyway. <laughs> so I started at 487 pounds. My husband passed away of a heart attack, my first husband. I had been married to him 18 years, and um, I found myself by myself. I found myself with only my two girls and realizing that I was going to be next to have a heart attack. I was morbidly, superly, morbidly obese, and uh, I needed to do something. So I started with the Atkins diet. To make a long story short, I'm going to try and make this condensed as possible, but I got down to 147 and got married. The day I got married is the day I had pounds. And uh, in two months, I was almost 300 pounds again. And I was slowly going up. I uh, went to a doctor that my husband goes to, and she referred, referred me to, gas, to a gastric... Uh, RNY gastric bypass surgeon, and that's all he did. And uh, basically, he convinced me that I needed I needed a tool inside me to take care of the issue, and that I would maintain my weight better with a tool inside me, with assistance. He kept saying assistance, and I took it and ran with it. And I called my sister, and unfortunately, I did not know that Connie had been trying for many, many years to try and have gastric bypass. I didn't even know what gastric bypass was at the time. And uh, I got gastric bypass first and started uh, losing weight, but I didn't know how to really work my tool because I only had two weeks with my doctor. After that, insurance lapsed, my husband lost his job, and we came to California, and I had no other way of seeing my doctor. Actually, I tried to see my doctor. I tried to get some information, and his office would not allow me unless I had two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, I don't know if any of y'all have had that issue, but I had that issue. So when I found YouTube, I found Saving Grace. I did. I got all my questions, a lot of my questions answered, and I found out how to go about losing my weight and maintaining my weight and all that good stuff. And that's how. Where I, that's how I got to what I where I am right now. So I um, mean, you got surgery uh, nine years ago. Um, did you have any fear about it, especially since you weren't really familiar with gastric bypass? Bypass. When they told you about it, did you have any fears about doing it? No. In fact, when he said that he could give me an, some assistance. I said, let's let's go to the table right now. I mean, I didn't want to waste a minute. I said, come on, cut me. I was ready. I was ready for my gastric bypass. I had been, I've never known what thin is. My body has never known thin, never, even as a child. I mean, when I was in high school, when I was elementary, I've always been big. I've never known thin. And when he said that I would be able to, uh, well, he told me I'd be thin. He told me I'd get to 104. I ain't there yet. I'm just wondering when I'm ever going to get there. <laughs> he said that he could get me to 104. Wow. With it, with this assistance. But let me tell you, I'm happy at 168 right now. I am. I, I can't complain. Uh, but I would like to see 130 before I, I pass. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> so... All right, now you were all for it, but how about you know Blue Eyes and everyone else who was close to you? Were was that? Did everybody else have the same reaction? Blue Eyes wanted to see me happy. I had a hanging stomach even when I got married to him because of the weight that I had lost, and to see me gain the weight again, I had three bed sores that were happening under my stomach. And I think Belinda, if she's on, she knows what I'm talking about. She's going through that right now. And uh, my doctor called it bed sores, uh, my regular doctor. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't, they couldn't fix it anymore. So uh, for me to lose the weight and then have plastics was necessary, really. That, that really saved my life, is basically in a nutshell. So uh, how did you feel when you... Uh, came back and you were so excited about you know gastric bypass and you, you being approved for it 
and you mentioned that uh, Connie, who's your twin sister, was not approved. How did you feel when you gave, were coming to give her this great news and she told you, oh, I know all about it. I've been trying to do it, but I, I wasn't approved. I thought that she was still going to get approved because we had insurance. So I just kept pushing her to keep trying to get the get the insurance to pay because uh, Guns, which is my brother-in-law, Alfred, uh, he's always had really good insurance. But in every insurance there was a clause and she wasn't able to get it. And I think that I didn't get upset or sad until the moment that I kept trying to share with her my joy. Like, look, Connie, I can cross my legs now. You know, all those non-scale victories. And she, don't get me wrong, she was joyful with me. But at the same time, she wanted to rejoice that too. But, of course, everyone knows that Connie is rejoicing now. Yeah, she's, she's there now. And so for us to both be able to live our lives, uh, the life that we're living now, is an amazing feeling, let me tell you. I'm grateful every day to be alive. I'm thankful. I wake up every day and say, thank you, Jesus. I'm so grateful for the life I live now. When you got first got surgery, uh, I know you couldn't have envisioned everything, but did you... In any part of your mind, envision yourself being here today, you know, 168 pounds, being so thrilled with your life, touching the lives of so many people, being able to work out, motivating people. I mean, did you envision any of this at the time? No. No. But I will tell you this, and I don't know if a lot of people will believe this or not, but if you're a Christian, you'll believe it. I had a pastor one time pray over me and tell me that he saw me talking to many people, many. He said, you're not going to be talking to a few, but you're going to be talking to a lot. And uh, God's going to use you that way. And I think that's where this came into play. You know, I think he, he really did see that vision for me. And I just, you know, I'm just, I'm just walking my life every day. And I'm just answering a few questions that uh, people send me. And, uh, I think that's where Mama Mama came to play. Uh, there's this lady named Dee Dee Bailey on um, YouTube, and she was the first one to call me Mama. And then it just kind of, I stumbled across that name, and everybody started calling me Mama because I was willing to answer your questions without putting you out there. Now, where did that drive and determination come from um, to to be able to to give so much? to this community like where you know where did that come from I think I'm an educator I think that uh, it just came it just came natural for me mm. Mm. okay and yeah we talked a little bit about that before about <laughs> some of your tendencies as a teacher and everything um, <laughs> I won't mention yeah, I can interrupt real fast <laughs> wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> well you probably have to most of the time <laughs> Um, okay, so going back to your profession as a teacher, you know, you um, talked about in a previous video, you talked about it in the, in the documentary that we were discussing, um, kind of your breaking point. So if you can just, just kind of elaborate on that and tell everybody what, you know, what happened. Um, and I believe you were in the classroom when it happened, right? I was in the hallway. I was coming out oh. of my classroom and... Uh, when I fell, uh, I stumbled. I stumbled, and I tried to catch myself on the walls, but the walls were too far away from me. And when I fell, I fell with my hands forward, and the only way to go was forward, and and I and I hit my stomach. Well, I kind of bounced like a ball, believe it, and I couldn't. I couldn't even roll over, and my knees are so bad that I couldn't get up. I tried, and I started to see these kids form a circle around me. But, you know, the kids weren't looking at me like, ha, 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 miss. Back, back then I was another name. She fell down. No, no, no. They had this look like, oh, Miss Gayton, she fell down, you know. 
and they all ran to get the principal. And at that time, the principal wasn't even around. And so uh, this other man showed up. He was the janitor. And uh, I kept telling him, no, 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 you're not going to be able to do it by yourself. And uh, it was him, my husband, at that time my husband, and two other men, and my daughter. Uh, my daughter, I, her, her little hands were just in my rear trying to get me up. And uh, it was a very humiliating day for me. That's when, that's when it all started, me, me wanting to live again and telling myself, nobody can help me but me. Nobody. You know, um, I, I felt right then and there that my life was limited and that I didn't want to waste it anymore. I didn't want to waste it. And I was going to do something about it. And I just prayed and asked God to help me every day make those choices. And I went to my kitchen. And I grabbed everything that was flour, everything that was sugar, and I threw it away. And I began to ha do the Atkins diet then. That's when that's when it all started, back then. Wow. So, <clears throat> I'll ask, do you, uh, did you talk um, before about you and Connie um, being large? And I remember one thing that, that you said was that, um, you know, for Hispanic babies, being bigger babies means that you're healthy, and that's a sign of being healthy, and ones that are smaller look like that they're not being fed well and things like that. I mean, do you at all blame, you know, your parents? I know you said your father spoiled you. Like, do you blame them or anyone else for you, for your weight getting, getting out of hand? I don't blame them. I do realize that they had a hand in it. My mother uh, would give us what she called egg bottles. And only the people my age would know what that means. They would take rice, egg, and milk, mix it together, and give it to the child. Because it was giving them the, the, nutrition, the, 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 the nutrients that they needed. So, so they thought. And that's just the way we were raised. That's just the way people believed back then. And um, yeah, I don't, I can't, I, I can't say that I blame them because that's the way children were being raised at the time. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm from, I'm from 1962. <laughs> I'm 51 years old. <laughs> I mean, that I think that is a good point. That you know, it, it wasn't as if they were doing something abnormal. No, it was something they did. Yeah. Um, I have brothers that were fed the same way, and they they were all skinny. So why why do you think that is? Do you think that was you know they got kind of better genetics or different genetics, or were they more active as kids? Because boys like to run around and do things. Or I think they were more active. I think they were more active. They've all played in football and things like that. I think they were just more active. They were always out of the house. You know, where where us, we were girls. We kind of stayed home all the time, and we're we're the ones that we learned how to cook when we were seven. We were seven years old, and my mom was giving us the dough to make the tortillas. <laughs> so yeah, I guess you definitely have a difference there in in boys and girls the way they they came up in that time. Yeah. So now looking back. Um, and I think I know the answer to this already, but I, I want I want you to be able to elaborate on it um, if I'm right. Um, do you have anything on your entire weight loss journey that you would that you regret or you wish you can do differently? Uh, trying to live somebody else's life instead of mine. Mm. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah. Yeah, I think I do. But uh, so, how I did think you that, get past that? I think that that at the beginning, I saw so many people doing their journey that I began to try and live their journey instead of live my journey. And I've learned a lot through that, through that experience. That's why I can say what I say today. You know that I have to live my life. I can't live your life. I've tried that. It didn't work. <laughs> 
That, I mean, that's real interesting because I know a lot of people have said that, and even people have come out and made videos on YouTube talking about comparing themselves. And a couple of the renewed guests last year, I think of Lisa and, and Sarah, Lessa Sarah, um, you know, talking about that. Um, tell me, how, how did you overcome that? How did you get to the point where you stopped looking at other people and comparing yourself or trying to do exactly what they did or live how they did? You know what? I just appreciate the lessons I've learned through that. I learned that the only person that's going to make me happy is me. And not to waste my day. There was too many days that I have wasted back when I was 487 pounds. What I've learned now is that when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to make the best day for me and the best choices that I can for me today. Because I don't know about tomorrow, and, I, and I'm definitely, yesterday's gone. So I have to do the best, I have to make today the best day that I can make for me. And even when I go to bed, I have to realize, did I make the right choices? Because, you know, I'm not perfect. And I just have to know that tomorrow is going to be a better day. If that, if that takes place. Yeah. I don't make it a habit, but you know what I'm saying? Right. Even with the things that I like. I like popcorn. I like Cheetos. I used to have Cheetos once a month on my on my calendar. I don't even do that anymore. Mm. I, I, I can't. I can't live that way anymore. I've got to learn that I'm getting older. My metabolism doesn't work as well as other people. And you know what I'm saying? And I don't want I don't want to waste my time uh, regretting today, tomorrow. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I definitely think it does. And, um, you know, I, I mean, I think that was a real good uh, answer. I noticed that uh, even Dottie Mae says that she always compares herself, you know, to others and it's such a downfall, it's something she's trying to work on now. So, you know, I'm glad you were able to address, you know, how you tried to overcome that and, you know, you know, taking it day by day. Um, I have to say that a lot of people are talking about how beautiful you look. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, I got all dressed up just for y'all. Y'all see the bling? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she's making me look real bad because I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm looking like this. So um, <laughs> I think I have to try to step up a little bit next week. Um, hey, hey, Khalif, where's your, where's your wife? I want to see your wife. <laughs> I want to talk to your wife. Well, she's not uh, feeling well, and also she had a virus on her laptop, so she doesn't even have a laptop Aww. now, so she can't even get on. She was actually going to get on and try to read some of the questions and interact. So she's usually on, you know, at least typing and everything, but um, she wasn't able to this time. I um, want to say something to Dottie Mae real fast. Dottie Mae that says uh, that to compare, she, do, she does a lot of comparing, and that's, I think more than more than one person said that. Never blame anyone in your in your life. Good people give you happiness, bad people give you experiences, worse people give you lessons, and best people give you memories. Hmm. That's that's one of the quotes that I have on my phone and I thought that would that would help somebody. I hope it did. Did it help anybody? Let me know in the comments. Never blame anyone in your life. Good people give you happiness, bad people give you experiences. Worst people give you lessons, and best people give you memories. Remember I like that. that. I like that. I'm sure that it did. Um, we do have a question, um, and first I have to say uh, thanks to Alicia and to Sarah for they complimented me on my beauty as well. So, uh, <laughs> no. well, of course, <laughs> I have to acknowledge that. But um, Alicia asks. How did you deal with the emotions that came or come with losing the weight and changing your life? You know, it's a day-by-day -day thing. And if you can just learn to live in the moment and not worry about what people are saying and thinking, those emotions, first of all, they're going to, it's going to happen. You're going to get upset when you see the scale go up. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna walk outside your door and feel like you've defeated because you could only go a mile instead of three. There's gonna be so many things. You're gonna get some stares even while you're losing weight. 
you're going to get those stares. And you just have to know how far you've come. You have to know that because the person looking at you from the outside in, they don't know that. They don't know how far you've come. I was at a store in Ross one day, and this was back in 2007 or 8. I was uh, in one of the aisles, and there was two Mexican ladies just going on and on about my behind. Did you see that lady? Did you see her big? And she, they said, ass. And I knew they were talking about me because I just happened to be in that aisle, and I walked away. And instead of me confronting the people, or not even confronting the people, just going like, whatever, you know, they don't know who, they don't know how far I've come. I put my items down and I walked out and I went and cried in the car. I made a video about it. I won't let that happen to me again. I won't allow that to happen to me again. Why? Because I came through that knowing how far I've come. I've come from this to what I am today. And, and you know what? It doesn't matter what they think. You know, what others think of you is none of your business. It's in their brain, not yours. You know, I've lived by seven things, and, and I had that on my phone too. Make peace with your past so it doesn't spoil your present. Time heals almost everything, so give it some time. No one is the reason of your happiness except yourself. Don't compare life with other don't compare your life with others. You have no idea what their journey's all about. Stop thinking too much. It's all it's all right not to know all the answers and smile. You don't own all the problems in this world. I hope I gave somebody something to think about today. Can we hear an amen? <laughs> amen, sister. <laughs> um, the first quote uh, Dottie Mae has requested, or at least asked, that you put it on Facebook so that she'll be able to have it on her, her desk at work. I will. Thank you. Oh, I will. Thank you. Um, yeah, I definitely, you know, I definitely agree with that, and especially with the comparing. You know, I mean, I go through that, too, and, I mean, I think I go through both of the things. And it's a little different for me because I look at it, too, as with powerlifting. So I'll look at people, I'll go to the gym, and people may be smaller than me and could bench press more than I can because they've been doing it a lot longer. You know, and sometimes even when I'm there and I'll, you know, be doing a press or something and I see myself in the mirror and see all this fat, you know, I almost want to go to everyone and say, hey, guys, you know, it's okay because I've lost weight. You know, I used to be fatter than this. Like, you know, I almost want to kind of excuse myself telling people, hey, I I'm look better than I used to, you know, because cause, they're probably not even thinking of me, <laughs> you know, but in my mind, I'm always thinking that and always uh, yeah. trying, trying to excuse myself in my mind for looking the way I do. Right. I, I do the same thing. When I go to, to meet and greets and people look at me, I think the first thing they're looking at are my hips. And so I have to say, well, you know, I did come from 487, so, you know, I do have all this loose skin. I have to, and I, I finally said, Rosemary, stop it. Stop telling people that because it doesn't matter. Most people know how far you've come. Yeah, yeah. So I want to know one thing, and this is actually, this is part of this is a, from a video that I saw today. Um, it was actually Belinda, Belinda Ball. Um, I don't know if you saw her weigh in today yet or not, because um, she usually posts it on Tuesday. Um, yes, I did. I saw it today. Okay, I saw so it this she, morning while she, I was exercising. Oh, <laughs> that's the perfect time to look at them, really. Yeah. Um, she, you know, in a video, she talked about um, sometimes how her mind, how she'll convince herself that she can slack off because she's come so far, and also because she knows she's probably going to lose another twenty pounds when she has a plastic surgery. So. I mean, what would you say, not just to Belinda, but to all of us who sometimes will ease up on our journey or will slack off some because even if we gain a couple pounds, we can always say, well, look how far I've come. We gain a few more pounds. I still come a long way, so even this short gain doesn't mean much. How, what would you say to people? What advice would you give when we are tempted to think like that? You know what? First of all, I was one of those people that I thought, well, they're going to cut this off, so woo! <laughs> they, 
they cut 25 pounds off of my stomach, all mm. right? But you're not, in my case, I did not get my stomach. I know you guys think I have a flat stomach. I don't. Uh, I was left with rows because she couldn't get everything she needed to get, so she said she would do it later with, um, uh, what is that thing called where they suck the fat out? Oh, the liposuction? Yeah, she said, I'll go back and do the liposuction on you. Don't worry. That's all going to take place. But nobody knew I was going to get a staph infection, and I, it, I, my heart stopped for three minutes on the table twice. I almost died. And I had a staph infection that had a hole from the top of my, where it opened up, Mm. And it began to eat, and it made a hole all the way down into my knee. It took a year for me to heal. So she wouldn't touch me with a 10-foot pole because once you have a staph, they say that once the staph infection sets in your body, uh, most doctors don't want to touch you again. They're very scared to do that. Okay. So I was left with uh, a lot of things wrong. Well, not wrong. But you can't say that it's all going to be taken care of with plastics. It, it, it don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. I would, want to, I would want to lose as much weight as possible before I did my plastic. If, if I had another chance. Right. Yeah. And I, I will just add um, that this evening when I, I did go on Facebook for something and one of the first things I saw was Belinda with a bottle of water drinking it and saying that she's getting back on track. So if I mentioned that kind of bad part from her video, I think I need to mention that as well to let you guys know she is getting back. Woohoo! <laughs> so, um... <clears throat> Do we have any questions? I'm, I'm trying to read as I go along. Yeah, it's, we just got, we got one in from um, Zen Maiden 1. Uh, she says, Rosemary, has YouTube ever consumed your life? I don't mean it one way or another, just asking. You know what? Uh, I have learned to balance YouTube. Uh, I really don't think that it's ever consumed my life because you guys don't realize how lonely it can be on, on the ranch. Uh, so YouTube, it was a friend to me. So I didn't, it's, it wasn't like it was consuming my life. While my husband was working, I mean, I do a little bit here and there. I, 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 uh, I worked for three years in California as teaching. And so I would come home to, you know, basically a clean house because I keep my house clean. And I didn't have anything to do. So I'd get on YouTube. And it became my friend. You guys became my friend. That I say a lot of times in my videos that you guys really brought me a, a saving grace because I was able to communicate with people. Back then, I didn't know what Skyping was or FaceTime with my sister. I would stay on the phone with my sister as much as I could, but I missed my sister with all my heart. She's the only family that, I, that, I, that I'm that close to. I have brothers, but my sister and I are connected. <laughs> Basic, we really are connected. We, connect, we, we FaceTime each other like 10 times a day now but back then it was a saving grace for me and I'm able to balance it out while my husband is on the computer or on watching his programs because I'm not a TV person I'll be on the computer so it balances it out it balances out okay um so I guess what advice um, would you give to someone who I mean most people who are obese know that they need to lose weight, right? You know, we it's not a secret to us, but to g actually get started and to do it and to take control and to not let your mind tell you you can't do this, what advice would you give to someone who's struggling to kind of get started and get some traction um, so that they can, you know, live a healthier life? Do the, do the things I did at 487 pounds. Walk as much as you can. Don't waste your time sitting down. For every hour that you sit, stand up and walk in place 10 minutes. 10 minutes. For every hour that you're sitting, stand up. I, uh, Connie and I are trying to practice that now. Still. Two, get rid of all the processed foods. You don't need it. You need to learn how to cook. Buy yourself that food that you need 
vegetables and fruit. Keep those handy for when you want a snack. Don't worry. You know, and I'm not preaching to the choir. You know, remember that when I go like this, I have all these fingers pointing right back at me. And remember to eat your food. You know, I know that uh, when we do exercise, especially when we do an hour to two hours, we need to rebuild that and, and get some protein in us. But remember to cook your food. Remember to do those things for yourself. You're only helping yourself. Get it. Get away from the from the from the starches that you don't need. Get the complex starches. You know the complex things that you need. You know you want a potato. Get a sweet potato. You want some rice. Get some quinoa. You know there's just so many things that we can substitute for what we really really want. That's that's, that's a good. Learn point. to make the changes. Learn to make them. You don't have to make them overnight, but learn to make them as slow and possible as you can. And they will become a habit and a routine in your life. That, that's really good advice because, I mean, all those things are simple things that we all can do. You know, you didn't talk about joining a gym or do this diet or this one. You just named very simple, basic things that all of us can do. That's what I did. That's how I started. I started it with 10 minutes a day. I had I had a classroom uh, at that time I was teaching uh, first grade and kindergarten together and that was <laughs> in itself I don't know how I came through that class but I came through that class and my kindergarten kindergartners had to take an hour nap within that hour I would walk and there was a teacher at that time a teacher would tell me what are you doing and I said I'm just getting a little bit of exercise she she said this was this was the thorn in my side forever and ever. Connie knows her, and she said, "Well, what are you doing that for? It ain't helping." But I was determined to make that every day a routine for me, every day. And it it and I started at ten minutes, and I finally reached to the point where I could do that whole hour while they were sleeping. It just takes me. It just takes you wanting to do it. Not thinking about it. Don't think about it. You just got to do it because you can and you will. That's really, that's really good advice. Um, <clears throat> so we have a question from, I believe it's Rob Reno on, a, um, on someone else's uh, account. But he says, since you are such a big personality within the YouTube community, have you ever felt pressure from your subscribers, especially back in the beginning of your journey? I don't know that I feel like that. I don't feel like I'm anything but rosemary. And uh, I don't let anybody, uh, I don't think I feel pressure because I want to help. You know, like, you know, I come from a, a, a back, I've, I've taught for 30 years. And when a student would come to my desk or ask me for assistance, that was my job. My job was to give you some information and, and, and help you out, right? Right. So for me, it's never given me pressure because I've never allowed it to give me pressure. It's, it's a joy. It's a joy to see you learn with me because I'm learning too. It's not all about me. I don't think it's about me. I think it's about you. You know, I turn the focus around. The focus isn't about me. The focus is about how we're getting through this life together. Have you ever had anyone say that they were upset with you or disappointed because you didn't answer their question soon enough or get back to them in, a, in an email or private message? Or? Yeah. And I apologized. And someone... Someone told a good friend of mine told me you need to stop apologizing. Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. I I know that must be, you know, with the, with the position that that you're in, um, and that must be difficult to see someone that you want to help, but it seems like that they, I don't want to say just taking advantage of you, but maybe <laughs> they don't realize how much time, and how much you give of yourself, and so they just want more and more, like it's it's never enough. Yeah, do you ever get that? I, 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 I don't feel that way because of the way I, I like. I'm telling you, 
I used to teach 30 kids at one time. So that, that to me is not, you know, getting 30 emails in a day, I mean, I get them. I read them. Hey, Khalif, you, you've been in my account. I, I, I gave you permission to read my account and answer any question you want. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, it's like a joy to me because there was a time that I asked those questions and I got a slam, I got a door slammed in front of me and said, I can't answer you unless you give me two hundred and fifty dollars. I don't want that door to be slammed in anybody's face. Yeah. So no, I don't feel I don't feel the pressure yet. You guys don't give me no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, Susan, taming the food beast asks, when you were losing your weight, did it ever scare you to let go of that weight? I tell you what, Susan, I think it gave me fire. For every pound I lost, I I would live at the thrift store because I want because I I went to church like three times a week. I wanted people to see me transforming like that butterfly transforms, and I, I think that every time I lost five pounds, I could wear a smaller size. You know what I'm saying? I came from a five X. So, so when I was able to get rid of the 5X and go to the 2X and then go to the 3X, I, just, I was just like, I was, that gave me fire. That gave me fire. I loved it. That, I mean, that's a woman's world, right, to go shopping, to have that privilege to, to look nice. You know, I loved it. I ran with it. <laughs> so... Um... You know, some people have talked about getting to their goal weight or getting to, you know, maintenance and having kind of a fear that without a goal in front of them, they'll maybe revert back to some of the old habits. Have you ever had that fear? I think that uh, with me, I had a husband that didn't live my lifestyle. Uh, he only has recently in the last four or five months has started to live my lifestyle. So I've been with someone and had to cook for that person and still cook for me. So I've lived that life where I could, if I wanted to, pick, but I chose not to because I don't ever want to see this person. Not that, not that, not that this person was so bad. I just don't want to, I don't want to be imprisoned in this body ever again. And it's hard now because of menopause. My hormones have not really stabilized yet. And so I keep seeing the number, you know, that I don't really, I would prefer to see, you know, the number go down. But I can't fight with myself. I just have to keep doing the right thing and believe that one day I'm going to see those numbers go back down. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, Otherwise, you're just beating yourself up. And for what? <laughs> To live a miserable life? I don't think so. I don't think so. That's that's very true. And you know, there have been uh, a number of uh, people who talked about that. You know, for different reasons. You know, with hormones and other things that are kind of out of our control. You know, if anybody knows what I'm dealing with, you, <laughs> you know that I'm dealing with exactly the same thing. Um, so you know, you it can become easy to get down on yourself when you're not seeing the same results, even if you're not the cause of those results not coming. Have you ever gone into a grocery store and you're going down the candy aisle and you're able to just look at that stuff and walk past it? Yeah. <laughs> that is a non-scale victory. Well, when you are able to go past the people that look model-like, those are my candies. I'm able, to, I'm able to celebrate with them candies. I'm able to say, I may not look like you right now, but I plan to look like you one day. The thing is, is that we have to live in the body that God gave us. See, I learned, I learned it the hard way, that I cannot change what God has already given me. You know, yep. we can change and we can be the healthiest person in the world. You know, just, just healthy, good heart, everything. But we're not always going to be able to change what God's already given us. Yeah. The, genes, the genes that came with us, right? Very true. Yeah. Um, 
there's some there's some there's some answer there's some questions here. What yeah. was the what was the most pleasant surprise of your journey? Um Nerdin in Oregon. Um I think the first time I was able to cross my legs, because I had been wanting to do that since a teenager. I think that was the biggest thing for me. I'm able to cross my legs. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> That was a surprise because I was doing it and I didn't even realize I had done it. I called my sister, Connie, guess what I just did? And I didn't even realize I did it. It just did it just happened. It was crazy. It's amazing with those little things. I remember uh last year we had um uh, Jess uh Too Big Peruka on and um he talked about being able to get up off the floor on his own. And Alicia put out a video a couple of weeks ago showing that she was able to get up and she thought she would get a lot of people mocking her and making fun of her but, but you know everybody was just celebrating with her we were all so excited something that right. small or someone being able to tie their shoes or like you said cross your legs it's those little before, things before before Alicia did that video Connie my twin sister had mm -hmm. done a video trying to because she wants to get on the mat at her gym so Guns was showing her how to strengthen herself and Connie said you know, that she one day is going to get up off that floor. We both still have issues because of our knees. So to see Alicia do it, it was like, yeah, baby, you go, girl. <laughs> um, we have a question Cookie, from... Uh, Cookie 46 says... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I think that one, we almost skipped her. Um... But she says, first, I love your attitude and your ability to reach out and touch people's heart. Have you, how have you overcome self-sabotage behaviors? What has worked best? Calling my sister. <laughs> having accountability partner. Having somebody to, tell, to, to, to talk to. Because, see, you can convince yourself all you want. I'm just going to eat that one more bite. I'm just going to go, I'm, I'm going to go in there and have that little bit leftovers. And you can convince yourself and you can do it. But if I've got the phone and my sister's still awake and I can call her and say, Connie, I really, really want to go in there and eat the rest of that. What do you think? She'll tell me in her heartbeat, you need to go to bed. Go to bed. And I'll just, you know, and that, and, or just talking it out helps so much. And, uh, but you know, sometimes, it, I can't talk to her because it's like one o'clock in the morning and I have to just tell myself to go to bed. I have to repeat in my head what my sister would say to me. Yeah. It helps. It helps me. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> no, I, I think it does. I think, you know, even with me just taking the pictures of everything that I eat, that help, helps because I know if I'm going to have this, I have to take a picture of it. And it's going to be on YouTube for everyone to see. So if I say I had a game this week, but I don't know why, but then there's all this junk on my video with my food in it, then, you know, I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot and then showing everyone. Right. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, that definitely. Um, Cookie Lou had one. Yep. What, what is your view on people who have such a strong connection to their comfort food they can't completely let go of it. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Do not go there. If you know, because you're sitting in your house going, oh, I want some of that. I think I'll just get up and have some. Or, or you end up talking to yourself and saying, I did two hours of exercise today. I can afford those extra calories. But then tomorrow comes, and you, can, you could have said, I fought that because I didn't buy it and I lost those extra pounds or those extra inches because it's not always going to show on the scale. Yeah. Don't buy it. Don't go there. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth the, 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 the things we do to ourselves, right? I can't stand it when I, when I give, give in and the next day I'm going, what was I thinking? Why did I do That's... that to myself? Yeah. All the time that happens. And, you know, it's funny because uh... – you know, Rob Reno and I talked a lot about us having similar uh, journeys and similar things with the food addiction and loving pizza and loving cheese. And, um, you know, we both for a while were saying we wouldn't even have cheese in, in the house. 
because if we did, it's you know one of those foods where it can easily trigger some sort of binge. We can have one or two slices, and then just our brain shuts off and go out of control. So we limit it to only having it, or like pizza, you know, I'll only have it if I go somewhere and have it there, or buy a slice or two and bring it home. I can't have so much in the house. If I do, I may lose control any time. I even have to limit my quinoa that I love so much, and it's a good. It's a good. Uh, seed for us to eat. It's it's actually the best protein that we could have. It's a, it's a superfood, and I still have to limit myself because I'm afraid that is, that's gonna that's gonna cause some issues. I'm not understanding this next question. Without hormone balance and optional vitamin D, especially over 50, the weight will remain the same or go up. This is clinically data. After 50, you simply don't have the hormone support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I've been trying to say that to myself. I keep saying I'm doing everything right. Professor Nurse Ray, she helped me out. She helps me out when I ask her these questions all the time. And she says, Rosemary, just keep doing what you're doing. It will balance out. So yes, thank you, Bea Bell. Bella, Bea, Bea Bell. <laughs> any more questions? Um, I don't see any more questions here in the feed, so <clears throat> I think they were trying to take it easy on you. I wanted them to ask you the real tough questions, but it, I guess they said Thank they were Thank you for be being nice, people. Thank you for being nice. <laughs> but um, I can ask this. Where do you see your, your YouTube channel, say, a year from now? I mean, do you expect to still be doing the same things, answering the same questions in the same ways? Do you do you have any other plans or anything? My plan is to continue to do what God wants me to do. If he wants me here, he's going to make a way for me to be here. If he wants me to slow down, he's going to make a way for that too. In fact, this week alone, I could not... I have this issue right now with my tailbone. I don't know about anybody else, but my tailbone's hurting really, really bad. Uh, I cannot sit for longer than an hour. Right now I'm sitting on, on a few pillows. Uh, and so I come to the living room and my iPad can only play so many videos. It's like I can't see everybody's videos. And my husband said, you know what? God slowed you down. And he has. I mean, there's times I, I thought that, you know, I was, I needed to watch everybody's videos. And I realized that I don't have to watch everybody's videos. I just have to still be in the place that he wants me and and right now this is where I'm supposed to be so if in a year comes and you know I've answered everybody's questions and there is no, nobody out I repeat myself a lot of times you'll see the same question and I've repeated myself but I tell people it's because just because I've answered your question already doesn't mean that I answered the person that just had the had the vi you know had the VSG or the gastric bypass question it's I'm willing to answer your question again, and I'll always answer it differently because I ain't going to remember. I'm 51 years old. My brain ain't as fresh as it was when it was in the 20. And it wasn't too fresh back then either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people who would disagree. Um, so Raymond Walk asks, um, how does the scale play in your journey? Do you weigh daily, weekly, or monthly? And how do you keep yourself motivated during a plateau or a gain? Right now, I'm in a plateau. Right now, I am a standstill, menopausal, crazy woman. Okay. So, thank you for that question, and uh, I am a daily wear. The, me weighing myself every day, it doesn't make me crazy. It keeps me sane. Does that make sense? Because I'm able to look at that... Oh, uh, we lost her again, right when she was going to answer the question. Uh, okay, so hopefully she'll come back in a second or two. Um, all right, it looks like she's coming back now, so I don't have time to get Sorry. you to ask her something hard. Sorry. Right. I, just, I, just basically, I just basically weigh myself every day and, uh, and make, it, um, make that a, a rule for me. I know if I've had too much of this or too much of that or I haven't had enough of this or enough of that, for me, the scale makes me sane. It doesn't make me crazy. Do I want to see it to go down? Yeah, I do. I ain't going to lie about that. Everybody wants it to go down. 
but it, it makes me sane. It doesn't make me crazy. It keeps me stable. Hmm. It keeps me going. You know, I, I, I'm with you on that. I actually, I weigh myself several times, um, several times a day. Well, my scale needs batteries now, but sometimes I would just, just I won't me, weigh myself every day, but I mean, uh, every, I mean, two or three times a day, but I will weigh myself every day at the same time, every day. After yeah. I've gone to the restroom. <laughs> I make sure I do all that too. I think, I mean, you know, I think there's some people who that hurts and there's some people who, who are helped by that. Um, so Rob did confirm that pizza and cheese definitely don't come into his house and uh, Julie said she has to keep hummus out of her house. You know, uh, Girl, hummus is good for you. <laughs> Eat that hummus. <laughs> Well, I, I think with her, she'll buy a tub of hummus and eat the whole thing in one sitting, so. Oh, well, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I used to be afraid of fruits and vegetables. I was afraid that because they do have carbs, yeah. I had to learn that that's the best thing I could eat. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not afraid of them anymore. I am more afraid of chocolate, Cheetos, cake, all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and even though I gave you guys, you know, Mama's in the kitchen. Do y'all like Mama in the kitchen, by the way? Well, you know, we'll give them a chance to answer. I'll say yes because I love healthy recipes and healthy variations of treats and other things that I enjoy. And I've, I've tried to do that. You know, at first I got people uh, to tell me all kinds of crazy stuff. I had to delete a lot of people because, you know, you, everybody watches, you know, <laughs> cooking shows. And... Uh, I had to learn not to worry about people that say crazy stuff. Just do it. And if you if you like it, you make it. If you like it, fine. If you don't like it, whatever. But I, I'm trying to incorporate a little bit of that so that you, you can see what I do eat. Like that cake that I made, it may not be a you know the best, but it's something that that's you're able to have and you're not gonna get all the calories and you're not gonna be guilty for eating it. But you don't eat it every day. I do make sure to tell you that. You know, it's just, let's say it's your birthday and you want a piece of cake, you know, or whatever. Right. Yeah, I, I think I think it's important. I think it's important for us to have those, you know, those types of things and realize that we can enjoy ourselves when, you know, we're on a weight loss journey and we're trying to eat healthy. That doesn't mean that you have to eat, you know, only rice cakes every day, all day, but you can right. have things, you can have variety, and you can have things that taste good. Right, right. I think the only, the only negative thing that I've, I just got to thinking about this, uh, the only negative, who was it that asked about the negative in YouTube? Zen Maiden? I th think so. I think the only negative thing that I've had is when, when I've gotten gifts from people, and uh, there was someone that kept writing to me and telling me that I was being uh, terrible by opening those gifts and showing everybody what I got. Uh, I finally had to let go of that, that comment and realize that that was just somebody being jealous. And uh, I'm not taking advantage of anybody. That does not mean, because you get a gift does not mean that you're taking advantage of anybody. It means that you're being loved on. And uh, I wanted to share that with that person, you know, and, and tell them that I appreciate their gift. And I want them to see the happiness when I open it, right? So yeah. that was the only thing that I have, that I have felt really bad about YouTube, uh, mm -hmm. is, is, is that person was making me feel guilty for being loved on. And I think that was wrong for them, not for me, but for them to say that to me. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, well, before I forget, everybody loves the uh, Mamas in the Kitchen series, so um, <laughs> you definitely have to keep it going. And Rob said that you're taking over for Paula Dean. <laughs> Without the butter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did just say, don't use all the butter. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> all right, so we are unfortunately out of time, um, but... You know, I told you guys it was going to be a lot of fun, and it was a lot of fun uh, because of roles. Um, you know, and actually, next week, because I will forget to say this, but next week we're actually going to interview Sarah, 
who was supposed to be the um, other co-host, but she wasn't able to make the commitment to do weekly uh, shows. A lot of things came up in her life recently. So um, she is actually going to be our next guest. So she ha is done amazing on her, on her journey. Um, she's closing in on losing 200 pounds. Um, and she's just a sweet, wonderful person. So you guys... She's done amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Definitely. She's, she's definitely done an amazing job. And, um, you know, she's a runner. And she's just... You, if you don't know her, then you guys have to tune in. Um, hopefully you do when you subscribe to her already. But, I'll be um, back. <laughs> well, you'll definitely be back. You're a part of the show, so you you have to stay. Um, and once this video, which takes about ten minutes, once this becomes a live, a, a excuse me, a real video that's actually saved on YouTube, then I'll be able to put uh, Rosemary's um, link to her channel in the description box. But it's already in the title, Gastric Rose, one word. Um, it's the name of her channel. So if for some crazy reason, you're not subscribed to her. Please go and um, subscribe to her and check her out. But um, I just want to thank you guys for the wonderful questions, all the comments. It looks like comments are still coming in. So we're still going to be responding to them, and we still can see what you guys write even after we go off air. Hey, Dottie Mae says she, Dottie Mae says she was not going to be here the whole, the whole time. Dottie Mae, you stay, girlfriend. You go, girl. <laughs> She did, and I, re I really appreciate that. I really appreciate the people who have taken their time out to be here with us, and even the people who will be watching this, you know, in the days and weeks to come. I really appreciate that. And, Rose, just thank you again for not only agreeing to be a host, but being a guest and letting us get to know more about you and ask you all these crazy questions. Okay, and you can keep asking the questions. You can keep writing as when, we, when we're off the air. And uh, maybe we'll get to your questions another time. <laughs> right, right. We'll definitely try to do that. And um, yeah, I appreciate Bella for 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 answering my question about menopause. She said that her doc, her dad's a doctor. I think is what she said. Yep. I just want to thank her for that. That really, that means a lot to me right now because, you know, sometimes you just have to. I want to say this before before we end. Yeah. Our time on this earth. It's limited, my friends. I don't want to cry. I'm a big old crybaby. So don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't do what I did. Don't do that. Don't waste your time thinking that you have to get to somebody else's expectations. Okay? That's all I want to say. That's what, I end, I, that's what Mama ended with. <laughs> all right. So we're going to end with that. And um, just thank you guys. And invite you to stay, keep writing your comments and questions to us. All right, guys, have a wonderful night. See you next week.